Welcome to Playing in Traffic. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Playing in Traffic. We just wanted to pop on, guys, and introduce our guest today. I am so excited for this episode. Okay, today, you guys, we have the host of the podcast, The Cannabis Connoisseur, hosted by Ryan Chavez and Jack Stone. And I I just want to tell you guys how excited I am because when I first came out of the cult, I... As you guys know my story, I suffered from a lot of PTSD, a lot of anxiety, migraines, insomnia, nightmares, and I was using cannabis to help me manage, and it was helping. And I came across this podcast, The Cannabis Connoisseur, and they had these amazing episodes, how to use, and and it was about how to use cannabis um, medicinally. So they had episodes Um, cannabis for anxiety, cannabis for PTSD, cannabis for migraines, cannabis for weight loss, all these fascinating um, topics. And it was really interesting and it was really helpful to me in my journey. And so I reached out to them. We reached out to them and they agreed to come on and speak with us because they also wanted to, you know, help our cult survivor community. So um, they came on and we had a really, really in-depth interesting conversation about cannabis and PTSD. Yes, Tony, I was very excited. She said, Lindsay, we have actual real celebrities on our show this week. Real celebrities. And you guys, this is the end of our season two. We wanted to end our season with this amazing interview. And, um, you know, we just really want to thank all the beautiful people that we have met along the way. I just... I really wanted to do this episode because cannabis has helped me in my journey. And I really feel so passionate, really like deeply passionate right now about helping others. And I just want to say like, when I came out of the cult, I was really scared because I felt really lonely and scared because you're leaving a big community. And I didn't really have anybody. But now as you know, we're doing the podcast and meeting other people and connecting with other people. We're building this really beautiful community of people. And it's like we're building these relationships that are deeper than anything that we could have ever had in the cult. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, like the love that you wanted out of the cult, but like for real with the, right. the same people, but like genuine because there's yeah. no ulterior motive of like, I'm going to go get my spot in heaven. And like you don't feel like they're going to turn your their back on you at any minute, you know, so we're like building these genuine friendships with these beautiful people who are um, survivors and they have been through so much and they, you know, they're so beautiful and talented and funny. And I'm just so lucky to get to know all of them. Anyway, my point is don't be scared. And there's a lot of people that have reached out to us and um, you know, we're just so excited to build the community of survivors and to help the community. And um, yeah, so thank you guys for listening. You guys are, are um, yeah. Anyway, this podcast is for you. This is our love letter to you. And we cannot wait to see all the amazing things that you do in your life. Yeah, it's it's very beautiful. Yeah, we have um, a few little updates. We have how many countries are listening? We have 15 countries. We added Romania. Oh, 16 countries. We added Romania and Netherlands this week. Yeah. Just this week, we added two new countries. So what the it's heck? Exciting. In the Netherlands and Romania are listening to our podcast. That's I know. Hi, guys. Hi, world out there. Hi. If you're in those countries, we can see you and we love you. Yeah. We're and sending our healing people. vibes. What the heck we're up to. I think a lot of the people in the cult right now and other cults all over the world, people are feeling a lot of anxiety with things that are happening in Russia and Ukraine and all over the world. It's triggering. It's honestly triggering and it's creating a lot of anxiety symptoms. So this episode is so important right now. I hope that you guys really find it helpful. Um, Today's Ash Wednesday and I just saw, um, you know, somebody walking around with the thing on their head and it just took me back to the cult days because this was a day that was like so scary to us to walk around and see everybody with a cross on their forehead. It was like super freaky and um, it would be very awkward when we would go preaching and yeah, it was like literally scary to us. We thought that it was like evil spirits walking around with idols on their foreheads. So I thought that was 
funny. It's always shocking t- for me to see, you know, when Ash Wednesday comes. Yeah. Surprising. Me too. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't even in a cult. But. Yeah. So um, another thing that I just want to mention, you guys, I've been obsessed with Kanye because there's a Netflix documentary and you guys have got to watch it. It's really good and it's really inspiring for anybody who grew up at the time that I did. Um, it's a uh, it's an amazing documentary because he's such a narcissist that he started recording himself in the 90s, in the early 2000s. And so you really get to see hip hop and, the, you know, the musical industry at that time in a way that we've really never been able to see. So you get to see like a young Ludacris and Pharrell and Jay-Z. And it's just really amazing. So anyway, anybody interested, check that out. It's extremely inspiring to see somebody who went through those things who... And somebody who's also a genius at what he does. I'm really inspired by people like that. Anything else you want to mention, Lindsay? Yeah. um, We just had that one connection story. Yeah, we've been able to connect people. I'll do this as as vaguely to protect everybody's identity. But Mm -hmm. we had um, somebody that we were talking with who recently left and then was also catching up on the episodes. And while listening, realized that one of the one of the people on one of our interviews was somebody that they knew and had had an interaction with at one point, like totally random. Never, none of us have all ever met each other. Like had already been chatting with this person before, so that was very like it felt very like kismet. <laughs> right. So that was cool. It was cool to see that like universal connection. Or yeah, is. and I think there's a reason why cults don't want you to um, speak with each other when you leave. It, there's a reason why they try to disconnect you because I'm finding out that one one of the most helpful things in leaving the cult has been building a community of survivors and have somebody to talk with and, and have people to laugh how, with. Realizing how systemic, how how um, organized. Widespread thought out their practices were because you guys all were having these individual experiences thinking like what why am I feeling this way why am I but like you guys were all having such similar experiences and so it's easier to see like oh this was done on purpose it was right. like all over the world experience. all over the country even in Shinchanji um shout out to Jordan from Great Light Studios he recently did an interview with uh, Chris who was a former member of Shinchanji and it was fascinating and I encourage everybody to go check it out um but yeah all the cults sort of have this these same types of tactics and then when you see it and you talk about it and you have somebody who understands and sort of gets these inside jokes it's really helpful in healing so um Yes, but another thing that is helpful in healing is cannabis. <laughs> so I hope that you guys really enjoy this episode. Have an open mind. Um, and and I hope that you all really give it a nice listen. Will you do like a one more introduction to their the name of their podcast? And- yeah, so the name of their podcast is The Cannabis Connoisseur. It's Ryan Chavez and Jack Stone. Um, you can check them out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. And it says that they are two cannabis enthusiasts who discuss the medical and other positive benefits of cannabis. And they have so many really interesting episodes. Um, I can read some out. Cannabis and motivation, cannabis and the endocannabinoid system, cannabis for pain, cannabis and topical creams, cannabis for stress-free holiday, cannabis and CBC, CBD and women's health, cannabis and PTSD, cannabis for weight loss. I mean, they just go in depth about how cannabis can use for cannabis can be used for very specific things and it's not how you would typically imagine so it's going to be really good yeah it was a fun interview it was a really fun interview thank you guys for for uh, joining us and we are excited for a new season coming up soon oh we have one more really exciting announcement yeah we're taking a a mini tiny little break to get organized because next week Tony and I are both gonna be on the cult vault podcast yeah, we are gonna actually be guests on another podcast it called the so cult vault. that's gonna be so crazy so we'll keep you updated on that yeah. and that's gonna be exciting check out that podcast the cult vault podcast is so good you like to interview survivors this is about all of the cults ever. There's so many. 
She interviews so many survivors of various um, high demand groups and it's very in depth and very interesting. So we're gonna speak with her soon and we have so many exciting interviews coming up. So you guys stay tuned, stay healthy, stay high. It's yeah. so funny to hear your voices and see your faces. Uh, you know, okay. when you do a podcast, yeah. it's like you just hear their voice a lot. Um, I'm uh, Tony. I'm the one that was in the cult. And then this is Lindsay. She's uh, the little sister. She's I'm just no longer she's there. And she's I was like, let's do a podcast. And she's oh, awesome. So so you guys are sisters. And <laughs> yeah, we are. Oh, cool. OK. And Tony, you were in the cult. Uh, but Lindsay, you were not in the cult. Is that? No. I was just kind of like researching and following her around for like 12 years. Yeah, I was in there. Oh, okay. I was the leader there. You're in a cult, you're in a cult. Oh. And she was like, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a little conflict. And uh, so that's what our podcast is about. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I I, um, I listened to the one <clears throat> where um, you left the cult. Yeah. And that was, um, I just think, I think it's a really interesting, so, so I don't personally have, a deep religious background, like, or spiritual, spiritual, I guess, maybe not like religious from the traditional sense that I'm think that you would be maybe talking a little bit more about. But um, uh, I think it's, I know a lot of people that are in this, in that space. And I just think it's a very interesting, like, like, situation overall. And I, I don't like, it's, not, again, it's nothing that I've experienced myself. But I really analyze it a lot. Because <laughs> I know a lot of people that are close to me. And uh, that are are kind of you know definitely in that space and and I feel like there's a lot of um there's like a lot of struggle that goes back and forth emotionally for sure um yeah very interesting so I I, I really appreciate you know your your perspective and, and where you're yeah. coming from and thank you for, yeah. for you know for listening to us as well and being a I fan. I was telling Jack um, when I first came out your podcast was one of the first ones that I ever listened to and I was um, already using cannabis. Okay. You know, but I was feeling a lot of shame about it mm. because, you know, all that religious stuff and yeah. indoctrination. Right. But by listening to your episodes, I was like able to feel better about it and understand why it was helping me because I knew it was helping me. I just yeah. didn't really understand why. And I was having a lot of migraines and a lot of like neurological symptoms when I came out. And you mm. guys that episode about migraines, about cannabis. Oh, migraines. that was a good one. So good. Oh, I remember you gave great. specific strains and everything. Mm. Like that one was really helpful. So thank you guys for doing that. Oh yeah. Of course. Well that that just makes me so happy that like the like the only reason we do this stuff is literally for like that. And we haven't tried to do it for really anything other than that. There hasn't been any goal. So it makes me feel really good to know that like you guys have been helped by this. So thank you for sure. sharing that. I really appreciate it. Tony was <laughs> so. very excited that you guys agreed to come on. She's like, these are like real celebrities only. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Yeah, you have to, you have to tell my wife that. So. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> you guys are the host of Cannabis Connoisseur. How long have you guys been doing it for? God. 2019, I think, actually, in February of 2019, so. Was it around the time of COVID? Because I feel like that was around the time that I started listening. No, so it was like, we started doing it. Um, February 2019 is when we recorded our first one. Yeah, so it was yeah, like a year before. It was yeah. just a year before. COVID was March of 2020. I'll never forget when COVID hit because it was the week I also quit my job for like 11 years. <laughs> so, so it was like, yeah, it was... Um, uh yeah so it was march it was uh february of 2019 and we started it mm -hmm. nice. yeah. yeah it was uh it and, and and the funny thing is when we started it we actually had to kind of disguise a bit of who we are just because of we were really concerned about the stigmas 
of, yeah. you know, just so, so it's like, you know, we, we worked for a conservative company. And so like, it, it's it, that when it came out, like, it was just a whole different story than today. Whereas now it's much more accepted. It, it's now been legalized in New York state and it's like, mm-hmm. Now just kind oh, of, that's right. It wasn't yeah. legal then, was it? No, no, that's it wasn't. So it, it was funny. Some of our episodes were, were talking about like this really like cool stuff that we know that people in like Colorado and California have had for years already, right? But it's like for us New Yorkers, it was yeah. Now I think we're probably on the the more progressive side of the cannabis coin. But yeah, for us New Yorkers at the time, it was a big deal. So. Wow, that's so exciting. Yeah. And you guys yeah. really one of the like when you look up the cannabis podcast, you guys are like, you know, one of the top ones. And and I went to your website and I loved how you said that you're not a stoner show. I yeah. was like, thinking about that even before I looked on your website. I was like, you know, when people think about a cannabis podcast, you know, you know, they think about like, you know, just the like the stigma, the stereotypes, 420, you know, stoner. Mm-hmm. And there are podcasts like that and they're funny, you know, whatever. But yours is really like, you know, more medical and more information. And I really, really love that about about your podcast. So I encourage all of our listeners to go check it out. Thank yeah, you. It's really, really good. Thank you. And, and and yeah, you know, I um that's thank you for bringing that up and acknowledging that. Um, I, I just noticed that when actually Jack actually noticed this, I, I shouldn't take, I'm not taking credit for this. Jack actually should take credit for this. We, um, we were just, you know, I would, I would just start seeing the benefits of cannabis and just what it could do for me to optimize my day-to-day performance. And mm-hmm. I would just, I would get so excited about it. I would start telling everybody and, and Jack, uh, came up with the ingenious idea that, hey, instead of just, you know, blabbering at the mouth to everybody that you see, why don't you just put that out in the airwaves and why don't we do a show? So Perfect. that's <laughs> so, kind of how we were too. We're yeah. talking about cults and mind control. We're like, you know, we can maybe help some people by talking about it publicly, you know, mm-hmm. even, yes. though, even though we, we were sort of in the same situation where we kind of had to hide ourselves a little bit because, you know, we're worried about some backlash or something like sure. that. But, but it feels really good to be open. Don't you think it feels good to be open about something a little bit controversial because you are helping people. It's like, we're talking about things that normal people are a little bit scared to talk about openly. Yes. And by us speaking, maybe it gives them a little bit of courage. That's what I'm hoping. Oh yeah. yeah. Nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm so sorry. No, I was just going to say, I, I totally agree with that. I, I think, I think, um, I, that, that's like one of my favorite parts about being able to do this now is that I don't feel like I do feel like we're doing something like like you guys case in point right like like the whole purpose as to why we do this is to only spread goodness and to help people better themselves and it did feel really strange that I felt a little you know like vilified in the beginning like right <laughs> like it, like for for doing something I felt was really good for other people and that was good for me and myself so yeah I I, I agree that's a really interesting point you bring up there yeah. Like, it's like yeah. a freeing feeling. Yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. 100%. Absolutely. What uh, what do you got there? Is that what what uh, is the indica sativa? Do you know the strain at all? This is I bought it yesterday. I think it's jungle cake. Ah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, is that like a wedding I, cake thing, right? Oh, you know, I discovered that I like the cake strains. Yeah. I yeah. Just the, discover that I work in the industry, and so I'm able to sort of like you know be you exposed do? to different things. And so that's also, you know, been part of the healing process. And for you. like you said, just kind of becoming more public with my family and my friends that this is something that is helping me mm-hmm. and it's not making me lazy and sit yeah. on the couch and abandon my family, you know, mm-hmm. making me more productive. It's helping me with my anxiety and helping me manage all these symptoms that I've, I've had, you know, from this trauma. And we should be proud about that. And we yeah, should spread yeah. that because a lot of the listeners are cult survivors. And that was why I really wanted to have you guys on because, mm-hmm. um, you know, they're nervous. They might be nervous to try it or they don't even know where to start. That's mm-hmm. me. <laughs> I used to smoke in like high school, early 20s. And I get like so anxious when I do it. So I haven't even tried. I had my son. It's been like five years since I've tried to smoke. Because the last okay. time I've done it, I've had like a panic attack where I'm like, I can't feel my heart. And then I just stopped doing it because I was like, well, I'm not going to try it if I'm going to accidentally have a panic attack. But Tony's like, ask him questions today. <laughs> I'm encouraging yeah. smoker to like ask for your suggestions of if I were to like try it for. Yeah, I totally. Um, 
I love getting asked that question. Uh, Jack, I know we both get, love getting asked that question. I, yeah. I, um, I, I, so like one thing that's really interesting for me is that I, I had a friend in the past that told me that like they were, they would use cannabis very, very often. And then they stopped. And one of the reasons that they stopped, they told me when I was like just kind of getting into cannabis was because of the anxiety that it gave them. And for me, like, that just like I was like, wait a minute. Like, why have I heard things that have we've talked, we've heard about cannabis being good for anxiety and helping with anxiety? Right. So why am I also hearing the opposite of this? And so it just made me dive in a lot more and like le want to learn more about it. Yeah. Um, if you're prone to anxiety, the the number one thing that we always talk about on the show is like use flour if you want. I think flour is fantastic, and I vaporize it like this with this uh, Dynavap thing all the time. Um, but I use a high CBD strain like often in the morning yeah. and I, I don't know, like, like, and, and I also use CBG. So like sometimes CBD for oh, people. I've tried that actually. Was that mm -hmm. what we bought? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have. Yeah. Tried. Yeah. So like, it's really interesting. Like CBD, I feel like sometimes can be a little too like calming and sometimes you need a little edge, right? Mm -hmm. You have to be, you got to have that like little edge. CBG kind of keeps you on higher alert, I feel like, and allows you to just kind of hone in and, and, kind of has a little bit more of like a coffee feel I think where CBD is I often like to use it like at the end of the day where I'm just kind of like winding down um and I will add THC so I'll add like a little CBD nug and a, what I do in the morning is I add one little CBD nug one little CBD nug and one little THC nug mix them all together and then I throw it in this little guy and then I get like a nice little morning like blend every yeah. single time that's cool yeah, yeah. so that's I would do that I would do high CBD yeah. yeah, that That'd strain you're smoking now, that's uh, um, Jungle Cake's got some CBG in it. It's high energy. Um, it's got 19% THC. It's got 1% CBG and myrcene. So that's a, that's a really good uplifting strain you got there. So can I ask you while you mentioned myrcene, so is that a terpene? Would you yeah. guys mind just, I know um, if you guys go to their um, their podcast, they have many episodes about terpenes and endocannabinoid system and a lot of really good information. Can you just give like a quick little recap of what a terpene is? Yeah. Is yeah, favorite? totally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I love I love terpenes. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Um, when everyone talks about cannabis, uh, they always talk about THC and CBD. Those are like the things that you always hear about. Um, I, I like to kind of think of like terpenes as the content of the show that you're watching. So like, think about like, you're watching a TV show, you have two TVs next to each other and you have like C-SPAN on one TV and then you have Mad Max on the other TV, right? Um, like those are two different contents of shows, right? So if like you turn the volume up on C-SPAN, that's kind of like adding a bunch of THC, you're going to get one specific experience, experience from that show, right? Like no matter what happens. If you turn up Mad Max all the way, like you're going to see all this like new stimuli, you're going to be hearing things, you're going to feeling the booms and everything. So like it's kind of like at when you add THC, it's like turning up that experience, but the experience is going to change based on the content of what you're putting on the screen, right? So terpenes, I kind of view as like what what road do you want to take? What what type of journey do you want? Do you want to have like the bedtime journey where you're going to sleep? Do you want to have the social journey? Do you want to get up and go for a run? What, what do you want to feel when you're using cannabis? And so terpenes kind of put you like, you can have CBD flower that is, you know, that's going to be indica leaning. That's going to make you a little more relaxed, but because there's not a lot of THC in it, you're not going to get completely like, you know, just like leveled if you do something like that. And then you have like the same thing. You have like sativa flower, which is the same thing. Like you, you um, if you have like lower CBD, you're not going to feel it that much. But when you add THC, you're going to start feeling those effects more. So terpenes, myrcene, limonene, terpinaline, um, osamine, like these are all like there's so many of them that we have available to us um, that do different things. So myrcene, for example, is one of the most common terpenes in cannabis. And that will give you the feeling of being a little bit more sedated and a little bit more relaxed. And like, that's what people go for often when they utilize cannabis. Um, I really like, like the, like the pinene, like, like type of stuff where it's, it's more like, and I like limonene too, where it's more like focusing and it, it, it kind of like sharpens you up a little bit. And so when I'm looking at flour uh, or if I'm looking at like, like mixing flowers, right. In my grinder, I'm often looking to see what terpenes I'm mixing 
and how much THC is going to be in there so I can kind of figure out what effects I can be expecting from that experience. So terpenes are huge. It's everything about, do you want to be happy? Do you want to be sleepy? Not sad because no one's ever sad. Do you want to be happy? Do you want to be like sleepy? Do you want to be less anxious? There's all types of different like ways. Okay. You can so are the terpenes, yeah. um, terpenes are what will give the flower the smell, right? The different Yeah, types totally. Smell. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you do some lemon haze, it's going to smell just like lemons when you, right. when you smell it. Yeah, so it's cool. This, this is just a personal question that I've always wondered. There are certain strains like Jack Hair, when mm. I smell oh. it, I yeah. literally like, I call it a brain orgasm. And, <laughs> but it's like where you, my eyes water, like I just get this, just by smelling it, I get this yeah. sudden uplift, this mm. energy, just by smelling it. And I'm wondering, is that from the terpenes, would you say? Yeah. So like, I feel like that is a lot of like, so like when you, your sense of smell is so, it's such a powerful like sense. Right. And, and what it does is it your, your sense of smell like holds on to memories also. And it like kind of like, in. yeah. So like, so like when you smell something, like you'll immediately be drawn back often if it's a strong enough like scent that's attached to like an experience, you'll be drawn back to that experience. So if you're like smoking Jack Herrera and you love it, right? And and it's just something that really is enjoyable for you. Yeah, when you open that and you just throw your nose in there for the first time, like I do that every single time I open a bag. Like every <laughs> single time. I that's the first thing I open like that and I'm just like and I'm like yeah or or it's like something totally new and I'm like oh wow right and then it, interesting yeah yeah and like that smell will indicate you're so you're right like the smell if you like the smell mm -hmm. um it'll kind of indicate to you like all right I think I'm gonna like this strain also. it's almost like your body craves certain strains and it's like your body yeah. knows what you need yeah so Encourage you if, if you guys are um, a little bit like overwhelmed, if you go to your local dispensary, they will help you. And you can ask to smell things even during COVID. Our bud tenders are so cool and they let us smell things and there and you'll feel like um, just a little bit of an instinct, like what, mm -hmm. what what smells good, what doesn't and to try different things. Yeah. And I think you make such a good point. Like every person needs like different things. And, and, and so like, I think it's really important when we're thinking about cannabis to think about it as a very individ individualistic experience, right? Um, and that means like not what you need on a permanent basis, but also what it means on like a day by day basis, a, a, like a half a day by day basis, right? Hour like, by hour, the, yeah. Yeah, hour by hour. Right? Like, like, like in the morning, you need like one thing, and at night, like if I put my nose inside a bag of brand new Jack Herrera, I'm like, I don't really want this right now. Mm -hmm. Give me some Kush, right? Or some like purple, something purple, right? And, and so <laughs> you start, your body like kind of craves those different things, just like how your body craves water and hydration yeah. first thing yeah. in the morning, right? So I think there's, I really feel like there's no difference between like that, like basic necessities that your body needs, like water and food and vitamins, like in your body crying out for those things and why you get cravings for certain things very similar to cannabis as well. Right. Like I know when I need CBD, I'm feeling like too wired up and I'm going to get anxious and start getting a little, you know, like, like crabby, throw me some CBD. Right. And, and so like, or vice versa, I need some gas, right. Give me some Jack Herrera. Right. I need to sleep. Give me some granddaddy purple. It all depends on what you need. Yeah. So speaking of strains, um, can I ask you, so a lot of the listeners are experiencing trauma symptoms so um like ptsd symptoms and there's actually a specific trauma religious trauma syndrome mm. and i want to read you guys some of the um symptoms that you know some of them go through um some they confusing thoughts inability to think straight um inability to trust people depression anxiety trouble sleeping um, all these things, trouble um, in their social, like social anxiety and feeling lonely. And it's sort of the same symptoms as just, you know, PTSD, um, headaches, dizziness, chest pains, stomach aches. I'm sure you guys are, are familiar. And you guys did a whole episode about PTSD and cannabis. Um, do you have any recommendations? And maybe can you explain um, in your experience or in what you've observed? how cannabis has helped people with, with these types of symptoms? Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
Uh, yeah. So, so, so PTSD, um, and Jack, I, I know you and I were both doing this episode. I think it was a, a bit ago. Um, yeah. And this, I, I know we, we were both talking about this recently. Um, so PTSD is, uh, is, is really interesting because what ends up happening, what they found in PTSD when they were doing studies is that there's, um, your body makes an endocannabinoid called anandamide. And what ends up happening in, in subjects with PTSD or, or, or victims, I should say, is they end up um, having less of anandamide. So what anandamide actually does is it's your natural endocannabinoid that plugs into your CB1 receptor to allow your body to, to balance, right? So when your body's out of whack, your endocannabinoid system is what plugs into these, your, your body has cannabinoids or endocannabinoids plug into your endocannabinoid system, the lock and key model to bring your body back into balance, right? And so when your body doesn't have a lot of anandamide, that's what's going to start happening. You're going to start being imbalanced. You're going to have mood swings. You're not going to feel as well. Hormonally, you're going to be off. And so what they found pretty simply is that, um, you know, THC is a perfect lock and key model for that CB1 receptor, right? And so um, that's one way you can really assist. But if you want long-term, more sustainable assistance, CBD actually helps create the production of more anandamide inside of your body naturally. Uh -huh. So you can kind of hit like both on, that's why a one-to-one -one ratio is so effective a lot of the times, right? Because you're hitting it immediately, but you're also hitting it from a more sustainable level. Your body's creating it internally, what you need. So, um, I, you know, that's why in the beginning, it may be really good to have like a one-to-one -one type of ratio where you're getting a little bit of both, but really, I think the biggest thing for PTSD is kind of weaning off of, um, the THC eventually and, and using more and not weaning off like it's a bad thing, but like just using more of CBD, if that's a long-term need that you're going to have, because it's so entrenched in anxiety and stress. Mm. And, and so much of what you have to be curing is that part of the element that CBD just becomes the most effective portion of the plant that you want to be utilizing. Um, so, so I would say that, and then what THC actually does is assist with removing, uh, memory and, and in the sense of dreams, right? Like, so if, um, that type, like, it's actually really effective. Sometimes people, when they use cannabis, they don't remember things, which, sometimes in the stoner mindset is or um, stereotype is something that we don't want to be perceived as right we don't want to be perceived right. as somebody that can't remember things however if you're somebody that needs to forget something that's really right. detrimental for you that could be really important that you forget those things right yeah. and and you soften that type of stuff up it so sort of like stops those thought patterns because you can sit exactly there you can remember like oh my god i'm going to hell oh my god i'm going to hell oh my god i'm going to hell right. but if you use cannabis and it sort of stops that thought pattern in its place you know and then maybe create some new patterns it's sort yes. of my personal experience i don't know yes absolutely it's totally like and and um i think what happens in ptsd is you gotta get caught up in these repetitive like mm -hmm. like urges right and and it, you almost have no control over it and and so I think, you know, I, I will never say that I've had an extreme form of it, but I've had forms of it that I feel like um, from a social aspect, right? Like I've lost a job and like, you know, 10, 15, and like you get that PTSD type of like feeling where like something will happen and you just get triggered, right? And you more easily get triggered and that can bring on panic attacks. And it's like, so, so what ends up happening is I think with cannabis use, is that when you start feeling those triggers, when you when you see those triggers um, in your daily life moving forward, cannabis kind of takes away that knee jerk reaction of what you normally how of how you would normally be reacting to a situation like that. So cannabis, like you'll you'll have the situation, you'll see the trigger, and cannabis just kind of just makes you sit back, right? And before you think anything, before you you start the sweats and your your heart starts like beating, it just, it stops it all. It says, do you really, you know, do you really have to do that? Right. <laughs> Usually the answer is no, right? And so, yeah, yeah, that's my uh, experience with it for sure. Do you guys have any specific recommendations? Um, any, just off the top of your head, maybe some certain strains or would you re have a certain recommendation of how people can start to maybe, you know, dabble into this? Would you recommend edibles? Would you recommend tinctures? Would you recommend mm -hmm. flour? Jack, yeah. what are your thoughts? And I know this is just recommendations, you know, we're not yeah. doctors or anything like that, but from our That's experience. Jack, Jack, Jack knows this stuff now. Oh, cool. <laughs> I, I, I like, I love edibles, I like edibles, all that stuff. But yeah. I mean, it's, it's different, obviously, you know, the, 
the, there's different things. The, the, the oils, some people feel uncomfortable, you know, smoking the, uh, out of the vape pens because the oils, the carcinogens, things like that. So maybe that's not the best route for you. Tinctures are great. Uh, you know, vapes can be good. Vapes are more for quick hits. So if you're trying to do something real quick, that's pretty much the reason why people do the vapes, get that odd, like that real fast, um, you know, trying to calm down. Um, with the edible, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're consuming something. So you're not dealing, you know, your lungs aren't, you know, going through anything. It's just, it's going right through your digestive system. It, that takes time though. It could take, you know, 20 minutes to 45 minutes to really feel, start feeling those effects. Tinctures are, are a little, um, are a little faster moving. You're dropping little drops of oil, uh, in, in underneath your tongue. So the glands there, are like, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're taking in that THC, that CBD, which is a little bit faster than a, like an edible. Um, so those are, I mean, those are, in, and then obviously you got capsules, same thing as pretty much same thing as edibles. Um, just a little faster to break down and not surrounded by food. But, uh, yeah, so I think that, um, for, for, I mean, everybody's different. It's, it's what your, your, your liking is and, and the strain that works best for you, but, um, those are the ways that, you know, the, the main ways people typically consume. And then obviously, you know, with smoking, not just the oils, there's the, there's the flower and some people like that natural effects of that. Like, you know, it's, because you'll uh, feel an immediate high with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. What, what would you recommend for somebody to start like a dose? What dose would you recommend starting with an edible and a tincture? Cause people maybe not, won't know that. Yeah. So, so like, I think it's, um, so if you're taking an edible, uh, the, the starting dose, um, I, the highest starting dose I've ever seen is 10 milligrams. I think if you're using CBD, that's fine. Like, I mean, you just can't, like, I've never seen it. I don't think anybody's ever seen anybody overdose on CBD. So <laughs> that's yeah. fine. Um, I think if you're going to do like a one to one ratio, I would start with like a five milligram total, two and a yeah. half milligram, two and a half milligram. Um, just so like you kind of get a, a feel and you're never going to be too much. Right. Um, and tinctures are cool because tinctures, you can really like, you know, it, the, the directions will say take a full dropper, which is, I don't know, 10 milligrams, but you can take half if you want to start. And, and like Jack was saying, those oral mucosal glands will just suck that stuff right in and you'll feel it pretty quickly. And so I, I actually think if you have a choice, my personal favorite, if you're cool with smoking or vaping, right? Um, I, th my doctor actually told me that vaporizing, this is my favorite, that my vaporizing is the best thing you can do the flower, the whole flower. And so when he told me that, I'm like, all right, you're a cool doctor. It was the first time I met him. <laughs> and so I'm like, and not just because you agree with everything, but it's like, you know, looking at the real thing, like, you know, real science. Right. Um, and he actually told me to smoke, but I told him that I vaporize using these Dynavaps, uh, that we've been using, um, from Dynavap, which is really cool. Uh, and, uh, and so he really agreed with that. But I think if you're using an edible, a tincture, I think those are way more approachable for people. And they're not as like, like for the masses, like I'm, my dad is never going to pick one of these things up and start right. using it. But I get one. Like I, really, I love your guys' episodes about, yeah. about the vaporizing. This is true. Oh, yeah. Guys, I forget that I actually, I, I use a CBD tincture at night. Oh, cool. oh yeah. And I just kind yeah. of forgot that I do that because... <laughs> Because when you yeah. use CBD, yeah. you don't feel a lot of um, psychological no. effects that people would expect. No. And that's why something good to say. I'm like, I don't, I don't participate at all. <laughs> so I'm talking about, wait, every single night I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> and, and that's. Well, it doesn't make me feel weird. And, then, and is it CBD would, uh, doesn't eliminate your dreams because my dreams are really beautiful and I. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually CBD actually um, is really good for people that act out their dreams like they, they you know they act them out and they you know street sleepwalk it's yeah. good to like chill you out and to just get you back into bed so um, yeah like I would say it makes a lot of sense if you're only having very pleasant dreams with CBD I would 100% but it's interesting because a lot of the um, survivors they experience nightmares they experience so many nightmares so you know this is very helpful it seems yeah recurring thing with them is um the nightmares yeah so it, it's just that i think it's that it seems to be that anxiety that's carrying into like like what am, what am i not doing right what am i not doing right and then you go to sleep thinking that and how are you not gonna like like there's no way i think it's so important before you go to sleep to have a healthy practice before bed to help you you know drain some of that out um that makes yeah so so thc would really help with you know, that type of severe or acute 
you know, nightmares, I would say for sure. We chose a kind of scary book for our book club this, this month on our podcast. So I've been falling asleep reading this like kind of scary book. And so oh yeah. <laughs> you know, dreams and having, because I fall asleep reading every night. So I usually oh. start dreaming about whatever I'm reading about. That's good. Yeah. There, there you go. Yeah, yeah. 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 As long as it's right. As long as it's good. Yeah. But it's a scary book. So not, that yeah, not, yeah. yeah. Well, I would change <laughs> that. Read that for um, the day. Have you guys ever come across any type of religious um, stereotypes or stigmas or pushback even on your podcast, anything like that? It makes me think of like devil's lettuce, you know, in the old days, that's what they call yeah, it. Yeah. So there there's been stereotypes, you know, for hundreds of years, which is why people are afraid to go into the dispensary. Oh. And it is overwhelming and it's not natural for us to talk about these things, but it is such a natural plant and our body is created to to work together with it in so many different ways. So um, I don't know, have you guys come across any stereotypes like that? Not on not on our show, because no. I, I feel like, um, you know, my goal, the goal of like our show is to bring everybody like towards cannabis and to show the benefits for everybody. Um, and that, you know, you could, that takes a person to like want to learn about cannabis. And so everybody that I think is typically listening to us is curious, right? And so that's why we say it's always a show for the curious consumer, right? Um, so we don't have, I haven't experienced people from that world, you know, any type of commentary or anything like that. However, I, I know for sure what, you know, what you're kind of mentioning here in regards to the stigma that goes along with cannabis yeah. and in that space. And and you're absolutely correct. I, I, I think I would love, and I think at some point we'll get there, and I've, I've mentioned this a few times in the show, when, when cannabis, the conversation around it can be as interesting as, as having conversation about water and the benefits of water, then like, I feel like then we'll be at the place we want to be at. And, and right now we're just not there. But as soon as we get to that point where everyone just knows cannabis is like a multivitamin, then I think we're going to start seeing more um, participation from that group as well. And I would hope we do because I, I think there can be a lot of benefits from, you know, it makes people me feel very sad because I feel like there's a whole population of especially Christians, you know, yeah. um, who are not receiving these benefits because of these stigmas and stereotypes. And it's yeah. it's really sad, you know, because they don't need to suffer. You know, it's so funny. Like, I, I think we were just talking about this a little earlier today about the spiritual purposes that cannabis can offer. And like, I, I you know praying and going to church and praying is like a big part of service and and how many times do people do that and are they really not paying attention to what they're praying right because they got all these different things going on in their head but like my point with all this is probably is that if you utilize cannabis these same people i think they'd probably have better sessions right better like better um you know better masses and and all those things that that you know they'd be yeah. having when they're congregating on on those days when they do that and it's just they would be more open right and they'd be more accepting to receiving information too and so it just it, it, i think it would only help uh the christian world and and the religious world in general and that's why i think we see that a lot in the historical context of cannabis right. Right. we yeah. just did an episode like literally we just did an episode and we, yeah. in hinduism rastafari islam they yeah. all they do like drinks and for thousands of years too like this was yeah practice where they have cannabis in it so it's just it's funny how we we're talking about that and you're bringing it up <laughs> it, yeah that's uh and obviously you know christianity a lot of these religions are super against it you know but yeah it's it, it's it's that's it's funny I just, hey man know. jesus probably smoked weed i think so he too did. i bet he did, yeah, did. <laughs> i bet he did but yeah, I mean, native americans it's just such a natural plant that was yeah. to us so um yeah. I, I, you know, I want to be part of raising awareness of its benefits and, um, yeah. and breaking down some of those barriers. And, and that's something that you guys are doing. So thank you so much for all of your work. Do you have any uh, more you. things you want to talk about? I don't think so. I was just here along for the ride. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm well, going to, th I'm going to take some time and do some experimenting. Yeah. That's fun. That's, that's the best part. A little different. You should, you should, you should, you should make sure you stay in touch and let me know how that goes. Yeah. Be really interesting. We'll break everybody updated. Yeah. We're joking. Yeah. We should smoke today while we do this, and I was like, because <laughs> I actually do see it more of like a, a spiritual thing. I like to yeah. have. I used to like set out all my paints, have oh, everything ready, yeah. and then one hit, and get really high, and then I would just. Yeah. 
Um, it helps you get into a flow state and helps totally. you focus and not think about, you know, some of the other stresses and worries that we have no control over anyway. And especially totally. right now with all the things happening in the world, I know a lot of the survivors and people all over the world are going through a lot of anxiety, you know, and yes. um, certainty. Yes. So, you know, if we can all just smoke a joint and chill yeah. out, yes. be okay. Yes. <laughs> I, 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 that is, that is my hope for this, that we yeah. are all able to get to that point where we can smoke a joint and and just totally chill out. And I would say, like, always, always tell people, if you're gonna start, go with CBD, you can't go wrong. Like, do it, and, and I would say furthermore, like, do at least broad spectrum, like at least broad spectrum um, or full spectrum CBD, like tinctures, edibles, and and just start there and take one a day and you know you you'll 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 start feeling a lot better for sure i, I agree. agree with the uh doing a half of a dose for the tincture one because yeah i was yeah i'm at like a like a farmer's market and the guy kept giving us samples oh, nice. oh. you can't get high from this and you're not going to feel it because i was yeah. like I really, you know it's like 10 a.m and i haven't smoked yeah. enough time. i don't want to feel anything yeah so he's like here try this extra dose he'd give me a whole dose try this one try this one and so it was like seven <laughs> doses of like the 5x 5x and so i started to kind of feel a little panicky because i was like i kind of feel like a little bit high and everyone really? can't get high off of cbd and i was like no i definitely i know what i feel like <laughs> No, she had a nice time. She called me. She was like, this is the best farmer's market. I'm really hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's she so and cool. my father-in-law, I was there I with think- my husband's <laughs> family. What? <laughs> oh, do they? I- okay, I just got to tell you. He also <laughs> was feeling the same way. I know he was. So we crossed each other on the hiking trail, and we both just started laughing. And I was like, I feel that. <laughs> he feels weird to you after all. I-, I-, I think, so like, I-, I think it's such an interesting point. Like, I think... I think it's interesting and we all do this. We all do this. I think it's interesting that we get anxiety from feeling the difference, right? Like, I think that is what ends up happening. You get anxiety from, you're like, what am I going to feel? What am I? Oh, I'm feeling something. I'm feeling different. And then like, (laughs) right, right. But if it wasn't for the CBD, you would just go straight through the roof. You wouldn't stop. (laughs) But the CBD like brings you right back down. And then eventually like, you know, you realize. It's so interesting though, because it's like, our change of consciousness, like I know you guys also talk yeah. about uh, how you practice meditation and yoga. Yeah, totally. Through those, you can also get a natural change of consciousness. And like, mm-hmm. you know, for millions of years, people have been doing it through plant medicine, whether it's psilocybin or, you know, different ways. Yeah. And it's like, why are we afraid of that? Like, maybe we yeah. need to explore those things. And I think that is what sometimes will give you a panic attack because you start like resisting yep. it. And so I've been mm-hmm. trying to realize, like, if you lean into it, yes. maybe, yes. then maybe, you know, we get a different outcome. And so that's yeah. something that I think we should all explore. It's it's so true. And whenever I have in my life been going through just, quote unquote, like, you know, the shit, sorry, if, mm-hmm. excuse my language. But like, whenever I'm going through that, I, I just like, I, I exactly what you just said, Tony, I lean in more because it just kind of like breaks it up, you know, it's kind of what it feels like it's doing. If you like reject it, like it just solidifies and it gets stronger and then like comes at you harder, whatever it is that you're rejecting. Right. And so just, just being able to lean in and just get immersed in it and just face it, you know, and that's, it's what seems to break it down and, and just kind of allows you to just, just keep always staying like clear really emotionally and spiritually, it seems. Right. But, yeah. It's such a, it's such a good point. <laughs> right. Um, I've really, I've, do you guys, do you, do you use hemp flower? This is what I wanted to ask you. Do you use hemp yeah, flower at all? I okay, do. Okay, good. Nice. Yeah. So I, Lindsay, I would try maybe taking a little bit of hemp flower and then like vaporizing that if you can, that would be something I would actually try. Yeah. Okay. Um, you would really enjoy that. Yeah. Then you'd feel the effects immediately. It'd be really cool. Um, guys, I, I, I don't know if you had any more questions. I, I haven't totally enjoyed. This has been yeah, fantastic. Yeah, like, I love talking about this stuff. Like yeah. this is, I think this is, this is so many reasons why people won't get involved in cannabis and it's what's holding the world back from being a better place. Mm-hmm. Right. When you don't get involved for bettering yourself because of fear of, of, like the consequences, right? Cultural consequences, probably more or less in your scenario. So I, I really appreciate this conversation a lot. Yeah.
Us too. Thank you guys so much. I'll keep yeah. you updated. I'm going to try a few things. If you ever come to yes. Denver, let us know, okay, and be in touch. I know. Yeah, I would love to. Yeah, I haven't traveled in a few years now, but I, I want to start doing talk. that soon. <laughs> We're coming to Rochester eventually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me know if you do. Rochester. We're coming to visit. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me know. No one ever comes to Rochester, so please do, you know. So. <laughs> We're coming. The mini- well, you guys, there's a lot of Finger Lakes out here for you to see and, you okay. know, nice. a lot of woods and, like, lakes and all that stuff. So. Perfect. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Take my oh, sticky guys... gummy and I'll go out into the woods. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's the best. Absolutely. I keep all right, well, thank you guys so much. We really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. This yeah, has been a blast. You.